Dark Terror The Faceless Void is a Lovecraftian horror eager to put an end to your timeline. Through one way or another, he'll lock you in place, whack the sense out of you, and drop your health down to zero faster than you can say Golden Finger. Face the facts, it's time for the history of Faceless Void. Faceless Void is a melee agility hero capable of avoiding large bursts of damage, in addition to locking down enemies with his bash and ultimate. Up first is Time Walk, which allows Void to rush to a target location, negating any damage he's taken in the last two seconds. This is a versatile skill that can be used to initiate onto the enemy, or to reverse any punishment taken, which is particularly useful during big team fights or trading during the laning phase. Next is Time Dilation, an AoE spell that causes the cooldown of enemy spells to freeze, effectively extending their cooldown period. For each spell frozen this way, the enemy hero will have their attack speed and movement speed slowed by a certain percentage. This can cause a lot of havoc in a teamfight if timed correctly. Otherwise, it's a good obstacle to throw in the path of your enemies if you're trying to run away. Following this is Time Lock, a passive spell that gives Void's auto attacks a chance to stun a unit for a short time and attack them again instantly. The second attack will deal his normal damage in addition to proccing all on-hit effects. This includes Diffusal Blade, Mjolnir, and yes, even itself. This means that you can be stunlocked by virtue of time lock whacking you time and time and time again. Faceless Void's ultimate is Chronosphere. This creates a large bubble on the field, freezing everything except Faceless Void and any units he controls. While inside the sphere, Dark Terror becomes hasted and has phasing movement, letting him zip and zoom his way to his targets. This is a powerful teamfighting tool that requires proper positioning for your allies to follow up, and if you're not careful, you could very well lead them to their deaths. It should be noted that as of 6.75, Void and his units are the only ones unaffected by Chronosphere, no matter where it comes from. In other words, if a Rubik steals and casts Chrono, Void will still be able to move freely despite the spell not being his. So if you can help it, don't show any Rubik players this video. And if you're a Rubik player yourself, everything I just said was a lie. Come on, you, you don't really believe everything you see on the internet, do you? Faceless Void first walked onto the scene in the initial versions of Dota All-Stars back in early 2004. He may have been based on a hero from an older version of Dota by Yule, by the name of Reason Naira, the Void Demon. This hero's title is used by another one in Dota All-Stars, so I apologize if this gets confusing. Faceless Void would borrow two skills from this hero, but he wouldn't use the iconic Faceless One's neutral creep model until his All-Stars iteration. Upon arrival, his description just called him a melee hero. Yeah, didn't do anything else at all. Just melee. In 6.05, he received his first piece of lore. He was once rumored to be human, but his background is shrouded in darkness, even to himself. Now, he is nothing more than a faceless void, Wink, who seeks revenge of the men who have stolen his identity. And also, he has time powers for some reason. In 6.10, Void received a rework, and this came along with a description update, originally posted by a tester by the name of Unholy Donuts. In this version, Dark Terror was thrown into the Void between worlds, and he emerged with the powers to manipulate time. It's rumored that he can instantly strike any man in a legion of soldiers, but nobody sees him move. For voice responses, he uses the Draenei voice lines, which is kind of a mismatch because it makes Void sound elderly rather than an ancient horror. My ancestors call. How can this old one help? Blood for blood! On occasion, Void will spawn with the name Gorzerk. From what I've gathered, it seems like Gorzerk was a French playtester who provided IceFrog with map editing tools during the development of Dota. His username also shows up in a lot of the old patch notes, so it seems like this was IceFrog's way of giving the guy a shoutout. Side note, but if you visit Gorzerk's website, it's a mosaic of his name depicting Thanos. I guess what he was trying to say is that Faceless Void is perfectly balanced. Void's original skills were as basic as they could get. He had a farming skill in Carrion Swarm, which would deal magic damage in a cone. There were two passives in Bash and Evasion, which were stripped down versions of Backtrack and Timelock respectively. Evasion only avoided physical attacks instead of all damage sources, and Bash just gave a flat percentage to stun, although the stun duration was pretty hefty. Void's original ultimate was Stop Time, which was pretty crazy as it stunned normal units for 14 seconds and heroes for 7 seconds. Despite how uninspired his spells were, the numbers were enough to make the faceless one an absolute threat. Starting in 2.6, Stop Time would have a global range, and its duration was lowered over time, all the way down to 5 seconds in 5.84. Luckily, it had a pretty long cooldown of 5 minutes, and Void wasn't allowed to buy Refresher. Imagine that! Stopping time for the whole world for 5 seconds. I wonder if there's anyone else who has that power. Hmm. Ah well, moving on. 
In 6.00, stop time's duration was reduced to 3.5 seconds at all levels, while also reducing its cooldown, dropping down to only 90 seconds at max level. The spell also started affecting buildings, which could set up for more aggressive plays onto the enemy team. Most importantly, this patch allowed Void to purchase Refresher Orb again, letting him stop the enemy team for a grand total of 7 seconds. Even if you don't build him aggressively, that amount of lockdown is enough to pick off a couple of heroes, provided that your team can decide to focus on a target. In 6.06, .06, stop time had its radius reduced from global to a fairly large radius around Void, the cooldown was increased, and the spell no longer affected buildings. He also lost the privilege to use Refresher Orb again, thus burying one of the most busted skills in Dota history. In 6.07, Stop Time was replaced with Temporal Drag. This was a global spell that slowed the movement speed and attack speed of all enemy units on the map. Absolutely awful. This seemed like a reactionary solution to Stop Time, keeping the concept intact while nerfing the hell out of it. Unfortunately, this isn't a spell worthy of being called an ultimate. Thankfully, in 6.08, he was able to build Refresher Orb again to make up for Temporal Drag's... existence. In 6.10, Void received a rework, replacing Carrion Swarm with the first version of Time Walk. This spell would have Void attack all enemies in a radius around him, dealing a percentage of his damage to each one, sort of like a stationary version of Ember Spirit's Sleight of Fist. Evasion was replaced by Backtrack. This was a passive that would give a chance to completely avoid a single instance of damage, particularly effective against huge bursts like Finger of Death or Laguna Blade. Bash was simply renamed to Time Lock, keeping in line with the theme of the hero, and Temporal Drag was replaced with Chronosphere, which would end up being Dark Terror's most iconic spell to date. Not too long after in 6.13, Time Walk was reworked, letting Void rush to a location and slowing the attack speed and movement speed of all units at the end of his path. Void would go on a long stretch without any major changes until 6.58, where Chronosphere received a visual update. This made it look more like a fishbowl rather than a contact lens. Its textures made it feel more impactful in a way, as opposed to its more mellow, older version. In 6.60, Void received his first Aghanim Scepter upgrade, which increased the duration of Chronosphere while setting its cooldown to 75 seconds at all levels. Although his gameplay is rather simple as a farming right-clicker, the flavor and lore of his spells, along with his cool-ass model, made him stick out as one of the most memorable heroes in the game. Maybe even one of the coolest characters in the world? N nah, probably not. Heroes of New Earth had its own version of Faceless Void in Kronos, who was part of the initial batch of heroes in April 2009. This interpretation of the Time Lord is a blue automaton covered in gears, and what can only be described as orbs from the future. His lore explains how the Legion wanted to create machine warriors in order to spare human lives in the war. He was the only one created, but the Hellborn stole him, fed an evil soul into the shell, and now he fights for the bad guys. His voice lines give off a sinister vibe, and he makes a lot of references to time and clocks. All in due time. Like clockwork. I've got all day. Tick. Initially, Kronos was a 1-to-1 port of Faceless Void, with the skills named Time Leap, Rewind, Time Freeze, and Chrono Field, which is just distinct enough to make him a completely different character. Like a lot of other Han heroes before him, Kronos would have changes over time that would make his skill set more unique, rather than a direct copy of his predecessor. For instance, version 0.1.66 would make Time Leap deal magic damage on impact. Rewind would heal Kronos for a percentage of his max HP instead of ignoring damage altogether, and Chrono Field would slow allies inside of its AoE instead of freeze them. Time Freeze was reworked in this version, renaming the spell to Curse of Ages, and instead of it being a 25% chance to stun a unit, if Kronos hit the same target four times, then they'll be stunned, making it more consistent and in line with the charge-based spells that Han is known for. At this time, the spell also stole agility for each hit, similar to Slark's Essence Shift. The idea of Kronos going in on you and ramping up his attack speed as he tried to bash you was a nightmare. If you paid attention to the numbers, you'll notice that Kronos was an unkillable murder machine zipping across the map and freezing everything in huge bubbles. Down the line, Curse of Ages would work on a charge-based system, adding to a percentage chance to stun every auto attack and resetting it once the effect procs. Ultimately, all of this was for nothing because it went back to having a pseudo RNG chance to stun on auto attack. In a way, it's almost like he rewinded all of the changes done to him, Anywho, after so many years, Kronos really didn't deviate all too much from the original Faceless Void, and ironically, this makes him more faithful to the original than the Void from Dota 2. Because of this, he really does remind me of JoJo's. That's right, Kronos reminds me of Trader Joe's knockoff Oreos, JoJo's. You know, because they're both so good and an imitation of the original. Yup, JoJo's.
Faceless Void saw his way into Dota 2 during TI1, debuting in August 2011. Dark Terror in this game is a visitor from another realm named Klazarim. It's unclear why he came into this dimension, but the power struggle has caused trouble for the adjacent dimensions. Although Void's exposure to time has left him disconnected, he's quite proficient at making fights personal. Void's voice lines truly give him an otherworldly quality, sounding like a mix between a cosmic entity and an ancient being. From a place beyond time, and time beyond counting, your fate approaches, dark portents ahead. Every day lived is a page of history. His model takes a step away from the Cthulhu-inspired look of the Faceless Ones, and ends up looking like an eldritch hammerhead. Just want to point out that he's truly more faceless here than he was in the Warcraft era. Come on, eyes in a mouth? That's a face. He was all hunched over and pretty clean in the beginning, but over the course of TI4, Void won the model rework vote, despite Slardar and Viper being better candidates. But hey, if you give the players the right to vote, they're probably gonna choose the popular hard carry. That's just science. On March 19th, 2015, Void did indeed receive a remodel, and feedback was taken directly from the Dota dev forums. His hooves were changed to talons, his facial markings became more etched, he gained more markings on his body, his clothing changed slightly, and he's standing loud and proud to show off those massive pecs and chiseled abs. Overall, it was a nice end result, although taking away the right to remodel Viper in the final round was kind of a bummer. On the same day, Valve released a great blog post titled Facelift Void, which went over a few quote-unquote redesign concepts, and honestly, it seems like this bit of entertainment was done to make up for the less than stellar remodel that Void received. That said, we were blessed with amazing drawings of Faceless Elf, Faceless Lobster, Awesome to 11 year olds in the 1980s Void, Face Full Void, and Faceless Rex, who would later receive immortality in the form of a courier available as an extremely rare drop in the International 2015 Collector's Cache later that year. And if Faceless Rex can be real, then it's only a matter of time until we get that sweet, sweet Faceful Void persona. Void's cosmetic items further expand on his role in the universe of Dota, as well as give some insight into the realm of Klazarim. In several sets, Void is referenced as being part of some kind of religious sect, namely the Acolyte of Klaz, Ancient Cultist, and Viridi Inanitis. The Acolyte of Klaz set suggests that members of the Order worship a being called Klaz, and the head wraps mention how all members have their eyes removed. The Time Mace item tells us that even the basic Acolytes have mastery of all the infinities of Klaz, and more devoted members require some degree of self-defense. Despite the barbaric nature of this order, the gauntlets provide its members with gifts of luck and protection, while the mantle protects them from the chilliness of interstitial space. The Viridi Inanita set makes mention of the Dread Cult in the Viridis Claw item, and it states that you must wear the proper gear to rend the tracks into ribbons. The Spine item is a series of spikes protruding from Void's backside, and they're a mark of one who has mastered the ultimate lore. Piggybacking off of this, green rocks called Cronite are a recurring theme for Void sets, and they generally offer some kind of control over time. For example, the Viridis Crusher seems to be decorated with the stones. The Cronite defense set is themed around this very concept, with the armor mentioning that the time-altering properties of Cronite help Faceless Void to stabilize himself in the material realm. The bracers can warn Void of future attacks, and the scepter is a general symbol of power in Klazarim. The infectious amalgamate simply says that beyond time, lie stones and crystals forever able to bestow incredible power. The Shard of the Rift explains that Cronite exists between the realms, and that to be struck with such a stone is to feel an eternity of pain. On a different note, the Jewel of Aeons allows Void to pierce the flow of time, to witness 1,000 seasons unfold in a day, and to walk unhindered through ages past and future. Finally, there are a couple of items that provide a canonical reason for Void's various head shapes across all these cosmetics. The Void Keeper's Visage's description says that Faceless Void has known many forms, his body twisted by the nameless forces that whirl and eddy within the time streams. So it seems like the physical changes to his body are a byproduct of time travel. However, the bindings of the Rift item explicitly states that he was envious of Dark Seer's pointed skull, so he channeled the fabric of the Rift to focus his intellect and his entire head. Dark Terror shows up in Artifact in a few blue cards, and even has a featured item, all of which focus around the lock mechanic. Buying Time, Klazarim Hourglass, and Fractured Timeline give us a little more information about Void's impact in the overall story, and his motivations moving forward. The descriptions all talk about the Klazarim Treaty, which was a pact made by a wizard named Pierpont, and Void himself. In exchange for cracking down on chronomancy being practiced in the world, Dark Terror promised basically not to destroy everything in his path. Chronomancy seemed to be a fun form of entertainment for wizards, but everyone's okay with ignoring it to uphold the peace. Even so, Faceless Void has considered showing them what he's capable of in case they don't abide by the agreement. Although Dave Fenoy returns to voice Faceless Void in Artifact, it seems like his acting method has changed, and there isn't a filter on his lines anymore. 
Because of this, Artifact's interpretation has a much deeper voice without the mysterious echo from Dota 2. In Klazarim, time is like water, nourishing, beautiful to behold in its various forms, and endlessly fun to play in. Moving on to his changes, 6.72 allowed Chronosphere to reveal invisible units, and its cast range increased to 600 at all levels. His Aghanim Scepter upgrade also lowered the cooldown of Chrono from 75 seconds to 60. In 6.75, Time Lock would deal twice as much damage to units inside of Chronosphere, and Void could no longer be frozen by any Chronosphere, a huge nerf to Rubik, and ability draft players worldwide. In 6.80, Chronosphere once again had a functional change, hasting all units owned by the caster to 1000 movement speed, and granting them phase while in the radius. In the following patch, Void had his turn rate increased from 0.5 to 1, meaning that he's able to turn much faster than before. Between these two buffs, Void can move around gracefully like a ballerina, hopped up on Monster Energy and 4 Loco. In 6.82, Chrono finally lost the function, as it could no longer disable passive abilities, and in 6.83, Ward-type units are no longer able to attack while inside. This mostly affected the popular synergy Void had with Witch Doctor, and the Chrono-Death Ward combo would need a little more communication to destroy the enemy team. In 6.86, Void had a rework, changing Time Walk to undo damage taken over the last two seconds, and replacing Backtrack with Time Dilation. This made playing Void require more strategy, as a mistimed Time Walk could put you in a bad spot. Moreover, Backtrack had a nasty tendency to mitigate too much damage without thinking, so this was a good way to merge the two skills, while also giving him some utility with Time Dilation. In 7.00, Void got his first set of talents, and they were a little on the boring side. 7.07 rectified this, however, and his level 25 talents either made Chronosphere absolutely gigantic, or gave him his original backtrack ability, giving him a 25% chance to avoid any damage. Between these two talents, getting Void to level 25 is pretty much a guaranteed victory, as he can lock down an entire team for 6 seconds, or survive any onslaught coming his way. For the time being, Void's last major change occurred in 7.20, where Time Lock was reworked. Functionally, the spell stayed the same, providing a chance to stun a unit for a short duration. However, a successful proc of the skill now causes Void to perform an instant attack on the target, which can proc attack modifiers. With this, Void can really tear down an enemy the more farmed he becomes, and he reminds me of another character who beats down enemies while slowing down time. Who is it? Oh, right. Geras from Mortal Kombat 11. Both are strong guys who pause time to whittle down their foes. Crazy how I never made that connection before. Faceless Void is a popular carry who's remained relevant due to his overall strength and awesome design. Just when you think you've got him down, he'll walk it off and keep you frozen for all eternity. That said, I gotta say, I'm pretty proud of myself for having an episode dedicated to Faceless Void and not once mentioning- <laughs> な、I'm Dennis the Tall, and that was the history of Faceless Void. Much love goes out to Rebecca Crossing for that Faceless Void manga portion. Follow her on Instagram at Rebecca.Crossing. Also, uh, follow me on Twitter, support the channel through Patreon, click on all the doodads, and rotate your tires every 10,000 miles. See you soon!